pep talks. Welcome to this edition of BEP Talks, where we always bring you fascinating guests from very diverse backgrounds who are experts in assorted areas who share with you their beliefs, their experiences, their passions, and today is certainly no exception. Our very special guest today is Donna Franklin. Donna, welcome to BEP Talks. Thank you, Bev. It's so wonderful to be here. It is absolutely my pleasure. Very much looking forward to this um, to this conversation. Um, you know, I know your story. I kind of want to let the viewers and the listeners start to hear it from you right away. Sure. And I think my big takeaway in reading your story and learning about you is that the big lesson is it's not where or how you start. It's where and how you finish. Absolutely. And what takes you from the beginning to the end, and that is pretty much the story that you are going to uh, share with us today. So with no further ado, here now, Donna Franklin. Thank you so much, Beth. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for listening. I wanna take you on a journey from deep poverty to great prosperity and everywhere in between. And my hope is that you'll get some takeaways that you can use in your own life. I want you all to imagine it's a cold Alabama morning. A little girl, only 10 years old, is getting ready to go to school. Her stomach is hurting so badly because she didn't get any dinner the night before. She almost never has dinner. It was normal for her. She walks to school and all she can think about is how her stomach and her head are hurting so much that it's hard to concentrate on anything else. She has not had breakfast either. There's no food in her house. There never is because they don't have any money. She lives with her grandmother because her mother is working all the time. She's working two to three jobs, but not making enough to live. <clears throat> Excuse me. She gets into class. And she wants to learn because she is one of those children who really loves learning. But she keeps thinking about how hungry she is and how she can't wait for lunch because at lunch, she gets to eat the only meal of the day. She knows the other kids are looking, talking, and laughing at her because she is always wearing hand-me-downs. She has to wear the same clothes three, four, sometimes five days in a row because she doesn't have any others to change into. She's in a constant state of anxiety and worry with no peace in her mind. How can she be? Anything else? She never knows where she will be living one day to the next, nor does she know if she will ever be out of this poverty, poverty that has damaged her soul due to lack and neglect. Another cold winter's day, it's raining so hard that the wind is blowing the rain sideways. She still has to walk to school, even in this weather. When she gets to school, she is soaked to the core because, of course, she did not have an umbrella, raincoat, or rain boots. The teacher tries to help her not catch pneumonia by having her stand by the heater to dry off since, by, since every piece of her clothing and every hair on her head was dripping. The water dropping to the ground with every beat of her heart, all the while knowing that the heater is in the front of the class. So the kids had something else to taunt her with. She felt shame for not having things that the other kids did. She felt hurt because of all the horrible things that were said and done to her. She felt very little hope, which destroys a beautiful child's spirit. The little girl was hiding things as well. Secrets she was keeping that she could never tell anyone for years. The biggie was that she didn't know who her father was. Growing up, she was never told anything about him. Her family kept a lot of secrets. She never knew until later in life that her mother was looking for love in all the wrong places, but she never found it. She only found sex. The second secret that she couldn't share was that her mother never wanted her. She was an unwanted child, and she truly felt that daily. 
She had a hole in her soul and didn't know how to fill it. She was never nourished in her heart, her mind, her soul, or her body. She was famished. <clears throat> By now, you probably know this is my story, and that little girl was me. I'm not telling you this because I want you to come on me on a pity party with me. I am telling you this so that you understand why I am here to talk to you about how to get from poverty to prosperity, not only materially speaking, but also in your mindset and in your heart. How can you come out of so much scarcity in your mind and in your heart when there was no nourishment in childhood from or my mind or my heart or my soul? How do you get from that scarcity to a mindset and even a heart set of love and charity? Well, it's because today I am prospering. I have financial freedom. I feel nourished in my heart, my mind, and my soul. I want you all to reflect on that childhood that I described to you. You probably all think that it was a very tough childhood, and that is true. <clears throat> but can we reframe it? Can I use that for anything? Can I today use that framing for anything in my life? I had a tough childhood. It was tough. What can I use that for? I look at my childhood and say, hmm, that was a pretty tough childhood. Or was the character builder. When I changed my mind and my thought as empowering me instead of bringing me down, that is when I truly knew I was on the right path to becoming my best me, my best self. <clears throat> Excuse me. Before I wrote my first book, I had never wanted to write a book. Some people have always had a burning desire to write one, but that wasn't me. However, I have always loved helping others. So as a highly successful real estate agent, when I heard the statistic that nine out of every 10 new real estate agent gets out of the business in their first one to three years, I knew I could help. As I sat down to write, I told no one because honestly, I didn't even know if this was an attainable goal or if I could actually write a book or if anybody would even care about it. Would anybody read it? I didn't know. I had to get out of my head and just start. So that's what I did. I told no one, not even my boyfriend. He would pass by my office and ask what I was doing and I would just say, working, which was true, but I didn't tell him what I was working on. I didn't have the confidence to even think that I could write anything. Well, it took me eight months, but I was able to write my first book. And to my amazement, the book was a huge success. As a matter of fact, the real estate office I work for has purchased several hundred copies of my book and currently purchases around 40 to 50 copies every six to eight weeks for all the new agents who come into our office. I was very satisfied and so excited that the book, my book, had become a sought after read. Then COVID hit. At that point, I was very focused on all the craziness going on everywhere, all over the world, scared, frustrated, and all the emotions that everyone was feeling. And I hated feeling like that. And one day it hit me. I don't have to, and neither does anyone else. We just have to rethink our thoughts and how we're perceiving the situation. I knew I could help. I had been working on becoming a better version of myself for years coming from where I came from and all the work I had done on myself to get me out of the terrible poverty mindset had given me the confidence to know I could. But how could I get the word out to more people? At first I decided, oh, I'll write a course. Was that the way I wanted to do it? Maybe. Then one day it hit me. The course was a good idea, but writing a second book was a great idea. I knew a second book was the answer, so I started writing. This time, it only took me four months to write my book. My second book titled, Developing Your Kick-Ass Mindset, was born. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am so proud to say that it just became a national and international bestseller. Wow, how far I have come. As I was writing it, I remembered a story. It's so interesting how we push things out of our minds and try not to think about them until something triggers that memory. 
But I remembered when I was 18 years old, I had been working for two years and I had saved enough money to purchase a blouse and a pair of pants for work. That was the first time that I had ever even thought I could do that. I went to the boutique and when I got inside, I realized I didn't know how to purchase clothes. I had never done that in my life. Most people grow up with their parents, getting them clothes or them going with their for, for them as siblings, and, and, but I never did. When you don't have food, new clothes are not on the menu. As I left the boutique and got in my car that day, I don't even remember if I bought anything. What I do remember is that day is the day that started me on my journey of improving myself, my journey of self-discovery, my journey of loving myself and becoming the person I was meant to be. Because I refused to continue on the way I was living. I did not want to live in poverty, nor did I ever want to have any child of mine to live like I had to. <clears throat> As I said earlier, I have done a lot of soul searching, reading self-help books, listening and watching anyone I could to help me in my journey to become the best person I wanted to be. In that journey, I ran across three questions that I wish I had been asked a long time ago to help me along the way. These questions are one, ones that most of us will never ask ourselves unless someone challenges us to. So here is your challenge. The first question, what is your perception of who you are? Pretty heavy, right? What is your perception of who you are? Let me give you an example of why we need to ask ourselves this question. Growing up, I always was made to feel bad about myself, my family, and my situation without knowing that I had the power to not allow that. I didn't know I was allowing them to make me feel bad. It's amazing when you are thinking one way and then when you realize you have the power, it makes them powerless. I, had, I could have changed my life much sooner if I'd been challenged to ask myself this question. I would like you to ponder this tonight and actually start questioning and answering it. Answer it honestly and then pass it on. Ask your spouse, your best friend or family member to do the same. If we can all change our thoughts from allowing someone to make us feel bad to taking that power back and realizing the other person has the problem, not you, then your life can change in an instant. So who you are and who are you and why do you matter? As you are pondering this question, write down all your wonderful attributes, such as your smile, your laugh, whatever comes to mind. Realize there are gifts inside of you that you haven't discovered yet, but let's discover them now. The world needs your gifts. The second question is, why do I exist? <clears throat> this question I have asked myself for years, and then I found my answer, but it's up to you to figure this out for yourself because everyone's answers will be different. But no, you have a purpose or else you would not be alive today. If you don't know or have a negative vision around this, change it. You must if you want to have a great life. The life God or the universe, whatever you believe, it has for you. You can be great. You just have to bring that out in yourself. <clears throat> I don't know if most of you know this individual, but he's a world-renowned motivational speaker and author. And his name is Les Brown. He said this, and it is so true. Do you know where the richest place on earth is? Is it the oil fields of Saudi Arabia? Is it the diamond mines in Africa? No, it's in the graveyards. Graveyards holds dreams that were never fulfilled, books that were never written, songs that were never sung, inventions that were never created, and cures that were never discovered, all because someone was too afraid to take that first step in realizing their dreams. Don't let this be you. You have so much to give this world. Let it shine and let us see your wonderful true self. For example, what do you enjoy doing? What are the things you are drawn to? Is there something that excites you? I believe God has put, put our gifts in each of us. And the feelings I just mentioned are the gifts he gave us. We just have to discover how to bring them out. 
Think about the person you want to be. Now figure out a way to be that person. Visualization works. Meditation is amazing. Those are two wonderful things that I have just discovered in the last year. <clears throat> the third question is, what is your sense of significance? Discover that you are important to the human race. You are important to the world. You're important to the universe. You were born to do something significant in this world, and you have to get to the place where you believe that, whatever it is. Is it writing a book? Is it an invention? Is it raising your wonderful children so that they can grow up and be the person they were meant to be? Whatever it is, figure it out. Your belief system has you where you are today. How is that working for you? <clears throat> are you happy where you are? Do you feel you have more to give, more inside of you? Of course you do. Most of us do because we don't play full out. If we did, we would have so many more happy people in this world. Have you ever looked at someone you feel has it all and wondered what it would be like to be them or to have their life? You can have that amazing life and probably an even better life because it will be yours. Take action to fulfill your dreams, your purpose, your true, you truly deserve it. I had an eye-opening experience four months ago. A dear friend of mine had a stroke and died. I was in shock. She, she was just four months younger than me. <clears throat> and she was vivacious and just everybody looked up to her and talked about her and just would call her just for whatever, just to run something by her because she was so smart and so good. It hit me very hard because I had not had anyone close to my age pass away. So she passed so quickly and I didn't even get a chance to say goodbye. As soon as I came through the deep loss, I decided I would not allow anyone in my life to not know that I cared about them. I am now telling everyone I care about how I feel. That way, if something happens to me or them, I will not have left anything unsaid and they will know I loved and cared about them. <clears throat> Another thing I've learned in my journey is that people will come into your lives and will stay for different periods of time. Some are meant to only be there for a season, while others are meant to be there for a lifetime. Some of these people will hold you back if you allow them to stay in longer than they're supposed to. So know when to distance yourself from others. I had a wonderful friend who I truly cared about but she could never get out of the victim mentality. After a time, I realized she was always gonna stay in that mindset. So I had to distance myself because I couldn't be the best me I could if I was always listening to all that negativity. As I was growing up, my mother was always afraid of being in our home or wherever we were. No matter where we were, she was always, she always made us afraid by telling us that someone was trying to break into our home or was outside looking in our windows, things of that nature. I believe she was scared, so she wanted us to be as well, not, not maliciously. I think she just didn't know how to handle it. She didn't have a partner, so she didn't know, didn't have anybody else to talk with, so she spoke to us about it. When I got older and had my own place, because of all the fear, I had to have an alarm system. I was afraid, just like she had been. Afraid of all the things she had told me. I was just afraid. This went on for years. Having suffered through this type of thing was not fun. And I think that is why I was so drawn to Bruce Lee. I'm sure most of you know him. He was, to me, the greatest martial arts person I had ever seen. There was something in the way he moved that captured my imagination and my heart. I know it was all in movies, but I love the way he took care of himself and his family. He was not afraid of anything. <clears throat> I knew I had to have what he had. I tried for years to figure out when I could take martial arts. So for years, I passed by this martial arts school close to my home in Denver. When I was driving my daughter to school or picking her up, I passed by it. And it was so many years that I did that. One day before I picked her up, I decided if I didn't do it today, it, it would probably go on for 10 to 20 more years. So I drove to the school. <clears throat> I parked and went inside. There were so many people in the school and I was a little intimidated walking in. 
<clears throat> I saw the brochure and went to grab it when a lady in a uniform asked me if she could help me. I just told her no thank you. So I grabbed the brochure and headed out the door. I think I kind of ran out the door actually. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I, I didn't speak with her for very long. I just didn't know what to say. That night, after I tucked my daughter to bed, into bed, I looked over the schedule and realized I could start that week. I called the next day, set up a, a day and time, and my daughter and I went to the school. I, I had to, for years, I had wanted to do that, as I said, <clears throat> but I was so excited that I was finally doing something. I couldn't decide. Excuse me. I couldn't believe I was finally taking Taekwondo. I decided to go all in. One day in class, we were learning to use our own body to throw other students. I was with a couple of smaller students like myself, and we were having fun throwing each other around. But then I saw him, the person I needed to flip. I had to flip him. He was triple my size. I went over to him and I tapped him on the shoulder and I said, may I throw you? <laughs> he agreed. I was so excited. So I took the position, which was turning around as if someone was coming up behind you and going to choke you. I anxiously waited for his arm to come around my neck. And when it did, I used all my momentum and strength and threw him so well, I surprised myself. And I think I probably surprised him too. I have to tell you, it was a thrill. At that point, I knew I could truly take care of myself and my daughter if it ever came down to that. Now the next goal was to get my black belt. It took me five and a half years to do so. And I was so proud of myself. It was the first time in my life that I had ever set a goal and attained it. And it was also the first time I was ever proud of myself. Again, a long journey, but well worth the time. A mentor of mine, Dean Graziosi, tells a story that I love and find fascinating. He said, a great man and dear friend of his by the name of Richard Rossi runs a remarkable company in Washington, DC, creating empowering live events tailored to high achieving high school students. They receive life-changing knowledge by attending. When Dean was talking with Richard about his events, he said, You've been blessed to see so many high, so many successful high school students come through your program. If you could identify one common trait that they all have, what would it be? Richard said, I don't even have to think about it. It's one word, confidence. He added, it's not the smartest or, or the ones with the straight A's that become the superstars. It's the ones that have an incredible amount of confidence that go on to do amazing things in their lives. When I heard the story, I knew I had to develop more confidence in myself if I wanted to do great things. How about you? Do you want to do more things than what you're doing? Do you want your kids or grandkids to become a superstar of their choosing, no matter what field that is? I know I do. I have been working very hard to ensure that happens in my life. If that is a desire of yours, let's talk. Let's make it happen. You have the ability to do that. Let's help change your family and their lives. It's been a very long journey, but one that I know I was supposed to take, starting with nothing to becoming the success I am today, has taken so many precious years. But I am in such a great place today, a place of prosperity, mentally, physically, and spiritually. That little girl who is so down on herself and in such a terrible place physically and emotionally is someone who loves life loves others, and is always giving back. I love that little girl because with all that she went through, she is my beacon of light. We came through it and made it out of the extreme poverty to prospering and helping others. I call it from poverty to prosperity. I love to give back. So I have developed a program at one of the school districts that allow children to bring food home for them and their families for the weekend so they don't have to struggle like I did. I would never have done this had I not gone through what I went through. I am so proud of my journey and myself for realizing I didn't have to live that way and for taking action to ensure I wasn't going to, that I could change my life and myself.
I hope this journey has enabled you to take something from it to help you in your own life. Thank you so much for listening. Have an amazing day and an amazing life. Donna, Donna, Donna. <laughs> yes, my dear. Oh, my goodness. Um, what an incredible story. Um, we all love happy endings and clearly one that you richly um, deserve. And I'm not talking, you know, monetarily, of course, but as I said before you talk, it's not where or how you start, but where or how you finish. For sure. And the, um, the distance of time and space between the start and the finish is, is life. It is. It's called our life. And I think what, well, I've learned a lot from you and I've learned uh, some things about myself. Thank you. Mm -hmm because of you, it's that we always have decisions along that path. And we always have the right to make our choices. True. What was it? How were you guided that you really seem to always make the better choice and ultimately the best choice despite your circumstances? Where did that come from? Wow, that's a great question. Um, Beth, you know, honestly, I feel like I have been guided by God my whole life. That's the only explanation. At eight years old, I knew I was not going to live in Alabama. I knew I was going to leave. But that's at eight. I mean, that's a pretty young age yeah. to know in your own heart and in your mind that you're not staying there. The only way, like I said, the only way I, I know I was guided, there is no other explanation because I didn't have any guidance from any place else. Mm. So I know it was from God. That's, that's yeah, the only way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we never talked any in our family about anything. Mm. As I said, there were so many secrets that were kept and <clears throat> we never knew. I mean, one day, I, I don't know, I don't know if I told you or not, but one day, I actually came home from school and, and I have three siblings and my mother, um, my mother actually said, Oh, by the way, we're moving tomorrow. We're moving to another state. And I'm like, what? You know, I mean, no, there was no, there was, I mean, it was just no consideration or it was just, it was crazy. Just mm -hmm. the, some mm -hmm. of the ways. So there was a lot of uncertainty and, and just, so I, it had to be gone. I feel like I've been guided. You know, there was one time that I was, I was driving to meet my cousin and somebody was flashing their lights in behind me and I thought it was her. So I pulled over and on this little pathway. And honestly, as soon as I got out, there was a man that got out and I was like, uh Oh, you know, and I, I could feel that get in your car, get in your car now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and so I truly feel it's been gone. And, and, I don't know how you feel about angels, but I know I oh. have a guardian angel yeah. my whole life because yeah. I would I'd probably still be back there. All my family still is. I'm the only one that moved away. I, why, I say, why did you make that decision? You said I knew I wasn't going to stay in Alabama. That was a decision because there was nothing. Why? You tell me. I it was just like a it was just like something that that came to me one day and i and i still know like i said i was eight years old and and at that point i didn't know much about it i just thought okay uh, i just won't live here you know but i think it was because of all the poverty you know i i felt like if i stayed there i was going to stay in that right, right all the people that had kept us down and said things to us all our lives i felt like that was just going to be something that was going to keep holding me down I felt like I had to leave so that I could be me eventually. Right, right. Right. So that was that was at an early age. And yet when you know, fast forward in your story, when you're talking about going um to the martial arts where you know you had kind of I love that story, where you had put it off and you had put it off for no specific reason, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And then that moment struck you where now what I got from that is that it's never too late. No, it's, it's never, never too, late. too late to pursue a dream, fulfill a goal, make new goals, Absolutely, make new goals, start again, is that we're only limited 
by um, by ourselves. You know, Donna, the word mindset. It just it just resonates so loudly in my mind in knowing someone like yourself because life was not easy. It would be easy to blame it on everybody else because guess what? None of it was your fault. Right. None of it was a decision that you had made. None of it was a result of bad choices that were not even yours to make. So clearly that wasn't it. But that even at such a tender age you did have that inspiration inside. You did have that motivation that I am more, I deserve more, and I'm not waiting for anybody else to give it to me. I have to take charge of it myself. Beth, it took me years. Even though I, at eight, I knew I wasn't gonna stay there, <clears throat> it took me years to gain self-confidence, you know, because Right, all the things. I mean, you're never told you're you're pretty. You're never told you can do anything. You're never told any of these things. And I was shocked when someone actually told me when I was in my twenties, "Well, you're you're really pretty," but you know, I mean, it was almost like a backhanded compliment. And I was like, "Really? You know, somebody thinks I'm attractive, right?" Because I was never told that. Well, Donna, just Donna, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Okay, oh. there is the proof. You are gorgeous. You are so beautiful. Mm, you're um, so sweet. Thank you, Beth. I loved your when you said you went to buy clothing, which listen, for an 18-year-old girl, you know, that's like a big thing. Yes. And that you don't even remember if you bought anything because mm -hmm. it clearly that experience was about so much more. You said it was then and there that you made that decision and you drove home and you don't even remember if you bought anything. Mm -hmm. Um you had, and now you are the guardian angel for so many <laughs> others. You mentioned that in your industry as a, a very, very accomplished realtor that I didn't know that, that nine out of 10 people who go into that profession leave within the first one to three years. I do. That's a staggering statistic. It is. And you did something about that. You're helping others to succeed through your book and how wonderful that your broker, I guess, um, whoever is smart enough to buy copies of your book and help to duplicate if they could even get close to yes. your success, at least as a realtor. That is so, that's like, that's just a Donna Franklin. That's just <laughs> that's so Donna sweet. being Donna. Mm -hmm. I love the yeah. name of your other book you know, developing your kick ass mindset. So there is the word mindset. It's the was, was that the defining moment when you started to develop your kick ass mindset at, as that 18 year old girl? Was, was the start? Absolutely. It was the start. It was it was like, <clears throat> it was like a lightning moment, you know, like <laughs> striking. And I thought, I, I can't do this anymore. I cannot be in lack. I cannot not know things. And that's when I started listening and reading everything I could. Yeah. And just trying to be somebody that I knew I should be and trying to learn because we didn't, you know, the only thing I learned was what was in school and they don't yeah. teach you how to live. That's just teaching you math and, you know, right, English right. and all those things. And so that was definitely my defining moment. That was the first time I ever said to myself, I'm done. I have to change. But you know, there's a difference. What you said, if, and I, I think I'm quoting you pretty accurately. You said, um, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't That's want right. to, I, I don't want to do this anymore. It's an easy thing to say. I think what you really said was a whole lot more than that. I'm not going to do this anymore. Exactly. I'm not exactly. going to do this and I'm going to take responsibility for changing, which is always our responsibility and personal accountability to do. Easy sure. to blame it on everything else. Easy to blame it on your mother and the school kids and the bad weather in Alabama and the long walk to school. Those are all very normal things. And guess what? They were very real things to a, to a little girl, to a little girl. Yeah. And listen, even way back then, little girls can be so hard on other little girls, don't we know? And big girls can be very hard on big girls too. We know that as well. 
but um, I can't applaud you enough for mm -hmm. that mindset ability that you had, that decision to change it, to change it just because you said, I can, right? and I want to, and I need to. And now exactly. you're helping other people. I, I listen, and I can't applaud you enough also for flipping that guy, you know, three times your size. You know, there's so, so much, much there's so much to learn from Donna Franklin. <laughs> my my goodness, my goodness. And you know what? We want to let people know how they can connect with you so that they can learn more from you. And it's just right here at this link. It's just right here. That's all you have to do is, is to click and connect to Donna. Um, you don't have to be a real estate person. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be someone who wants to do um, martial arts. No. <laughs> it's, it's about life. It's that four letter word called life that happens. That's right. And that we do, we must take so much more control over it than maybe sometimes we do. Because it's just and, so easy to not. Oh, Beth, you are so right. You, you are so wise. I mean, all the things that you're saying. And and I have to, I wanted to go back a little bit, if you don't mind. So on, on my book that I actually give out to the new students, they, my office allows me to go in and speak with them for about five minutes before I give them the book. <clears throat> and it's my first, the first book it's on real estate, but I tell them and another mindset thing, I say, listen, this book is free to you, but you need to think of this book as being worth a hundred thousand dollars, if not more. Because this, all the things that I've done in this book have allowed me to get that money every year consistently. And you so paid a big price for that. That mm -hmm. was not free to you. Nobody gave it to you. You paid dearly for it. Exactly. Exactly. Good point. And I want, and, and you know, it's, it's interesting because that's why I was trying to tell them. You have to change what you're thinking. So right. do not think that this is just a free book and it's something that I might read. Right. Yeah. Read it. Right. Because I promise you, you will get where you want to be. If right. You it's not a throw away. away. It's, it's literally a hand mm. up. It literally right. is. And um, you gave us all kind of a little bit of an assignment. I just want to go over that again. Uh, what is your perception? What is each of our own perception of who we are and why right. we're here? Right. And um, why do I matter? That's right. Why do I exist? And what is my sense of significance? Wouldn't that be an extraordinary questionnaire to put out and get the feedback? and and see because i know some people god bless them who have and and deservedly so in most cases a very very good sense of who they are and their self-worth and what they've come through from their own beliefs experiences and passions we all know other people i guess when you've been around as long as i've been that you meet people and go are we talking about the same person <laughs> really but i think the hardest thing is that self-assessment it is it causes you, requires you to dig deep and be very, very honest. That's true. And be very honest about that. Um, I have to thank you for that homework assignment. I need to really think um, very much about that. What you said that Les Brown said about where the richest places in the world are, the graveyard. Mm -hmm. You know, that is probably so sadly true. Yes. that um, the people who died with unfulfilled goals and dreams and right. didn't write the book, didn't take the course, didn't go on the trip. Uh, I mean, I think it's okay that we all, well, maybe I'm excusing myself, that you want to leave saying, I wish I could have done more. Right. I, wished, I, I wish I had had more time, but what time did I waste? And uh, that you are, you are just um, a life lesson right here. <laughs> right here for for oh. everyone and please everyone connect with someone with, with donna because there are a few people like donna who can teach you through her own example her own beliefs experiences and passions as she shared here today on beth talks why you matter why each of us matters none of us are here by accident we all do have a purpose and the one thing that i decided a long time ago 
the one thing I didn't want to leave this world with was regret to say, I wonder what would have happened if. Right. And I've been a pretty daring person in my life. I've had people look at me and say, why are you doing this? You know, <laughs> why, you know, why? And I'm like, well, why not? What's your why? My why is why not? Kind of thing. <laughs> um, because then, you know, it doesn't mean that everything is always uh, the, the uh, overwhelming success that you thought. It could. No, no, it's just another step forward. It's just another part of the journey, the process. But to say, mm -hmm. I never wanted to be that old lady on the front porch, you know, in the rocking chair, looking back, saying, I wonder what would have happened if. So um, true. Find out. Do it. Exactly. Right. Just do it. Exactly. Just do it. Nike. Hello. <laughs> just, I don't want to give them a plug, but just, just do it. So uh, to people like Les Brown and Bruce Lee, I put Donna Franklin in that category oh. of having, no, I do. I do. And I say that with such, um, such sincerity because you've lived it. You're not pontificating to somebody else. You've done it. And I think your mindset is if I could, so can you. Absolutely. And Absolutely. don't you love that saying, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Yes. You're That's right. one of my favorite sayings. Love that. Love that. So, so don't put limiting beliefs on yourself. That's right. If other people doubt you, that's their prerogative. That's their right. That's their choice. That's their decision. But it goes back to the word that you said in connection to Bruce Lee, confidence. That's right. From the That's Latin with faith. Love it. And you know, with each one of those questions that, that if they, if everybody will just sit down and write it down, it will also give them the confidence to pursue something else because they're like, okay, well, you know, then I am truly worth something. Cause you right. know, when you grow up the way I did, I, I never really felt I was worth anything for years. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if I had been asked those questions and that's when I thought, I've got to, I've got to put that in here. Yeah. I want people to know, just ask yourself those questions and develop yourself and get the confidence that you need to do whatever you want to do, to do what God wants you to do, to be the person you want to be. And, and I know everyone can, it's just, they just, they just have to do it. Right. Just do it. Just take, just, do it. just as decide. Tony Robbins says, take massive action. <laughs> take massive action. And you know, at the end of it, I remember, you know, for years I'd say to my dad, you know, dad, what do you think about this? I'm thinking of doing this. And he would look at me very thoughtfully. He would take off his glasses in his very <laughs> methodical way and kind of lean in. And he'd say, are you willing to do the work? And I'd say, yeah. <laughs> are you willing to be accountable for the outcome? Wow. And I said, yeah. And he said, well, then do it. Oh, I love that. What an awesome dad. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. And, and, and wasn't that like the best advice you could get? Yes. If you want to do it badly enough, do it. You'll learn from it. Just That's be amazing. accountable for the results. Um, don't blame it. And, and then you go on to the next thing. And suddenly it's in your rear view mirror and you are moving forward. That's you fantastic, are moving forward. Beth. I fantastic. love that. Well, yeah, he was just such so wise, so wise in how he could, um, you know, really boil it down to just those simple things. Amazing. And um, and 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 for me to be so blessed to get that kind of encouragement. Yes, fantastic. That yes, absolutely. So a very different. Um, uh, I was so blessed to have a very different childhood. That's well, thank goodness. That is wonderful. And look at your success. You know, and you count it in different ways. I get to talk mm -hmm. with and meet people like you. I mean, what an honor, what a blessing, what a privilege that you would take the time and that we together can share our beliefs, our experiences, our passions, and hope that we can inspire, motivate, um, move someone, even make them angry at themselves sometimes, which is okay. It is. You know, to say, who do they think they're talking to? Well, guess what? We're talking to you. And if you're taking it that way, in a defensive way, there's a reason that you are. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I never even thought about that. That is amazing. Well, there's right. a reason. There's a reason that you are. Yeah. So please connect with Donna Franklin. So much to, so much more to know about her. So much to, to share. 
that you can in a very private way with Donna, because clearly you can see this is a woman who, as she said, loves to give back, loves to help other people. She can help you find your kick ass mindset. It would be my pleasure. I know it would be. Donna, thank you so much for thank joining you. us here today. And to our viewers, our listeners, thank you for joining also. It's been an honor to introduce you to Donna Franklin. Um, we bring you wonderful guests all the time on each edition of BEP Talks, and you can actually be a guest on BEP Talks. Please go to beptalks.com for all of the information that you would need. And as we always say here, may the best always be yet to come. And we certainly wish that for you and for yours. So until we talk again, bye for now.